Welcome everyone, another history making moment for the Racing League. I'm the General Manager of Commercial for TRL, Terry Kennedy, along with co-founder and CEO Steve Brown joining us. On this historic occasion, there seems to be a lot of milestones in a very short period of time for the Racing League. We had the launch, the concept was first, the naming of the ambassadors, Billy Slater, Laurie Daly, Shane Crawford, Brittany Taylor. Of course, that was another big moment. Then we had the purchasing of our, the first yearlings for our owners of the TRL, and that was magnificent up on the Gold Coast at the Magic Millions. And now it is a history-making draft. We are telling you it's the first ever draft for horse racing in the world, in the universe, definitely in this country. So it's exciting times and exciting to find out what high-quality premium animals are joining your stable. Steve, another milestone. It is another milestone, and uh, I think it's probably a good time to, to maybe thank everyone mm. for, for embracing the Racing League. Uh, on behalf of a big team here who have put in a lot of effort into this, trying to uh, deliver something that's never been done before, we, we couldn't have done so without, without uh, the early adopters and, and people getting behind us and, and trusting us. Uh, we're grateful to you. Uh, we're excited by the way it's rolling out. And we're really enjoying the feedback we're getting from you and um, and the fact that you guys are introducing your friends into the racing league is uh, is great to see. And, uh, yeah, so a big thanks from everyone at the team. Now, apart from uh, Steve and myself, we've got a star-studded arrangement tonight. We've got some of the luminaries of the sport joining us as uh, members of the TRL, which we look forward to. It is an esteemed bunch headed by none other and now the TRL Integrity Arbiter in Ray Murray. Good morning or good afternoon, Ray, or good evening, depending where you're watching from. Yeah, good evening for me, uh, Terry. Nice to have you on board. Great to be on board. Now, you've done all the big draws for um, slippers and group ones, but I imagine you're pretty nervous tonight pulling out the, the team names to find out who gets the first, second and third picks as far as the racing league is concerned. Yes, well, uh, when Steve asked me to pull out an old prop, a, uh, a pork pie hat, that took a bit of finding, Steve, and I had to knock a few cobwebs off. But uh, if you can see there, uh, uh, we've got one. I hope the colour fits. <laughs> well, that's it's where neutral. the team names will be coming out. We'll explain exactly how the draw happens. And also, taking us through uh, the nine horses that were purchased on behalf of the owners, or the owners purchased them of the Racing League, at the Magic Millions on the Gold Coast, Mick Malone, the head of our bloodstock department at TRL. Hello, Mick. Thank you, guys. Uh, great to be here tonight. Really, really looking forward to it. And a big thank you to everyone getting behind TRL and entrusting us and the buying team to purchase these babies for you. It is. So you were under the pressure for the Magic Millions sales, and now it's the pressure time for the three managers of the New South Wales Tycoons, the Vic Hustlers, and also the Queensland Rogues. So we'll go to Ty Anglin first, who's going to have the managerial duties for the New South Wales Tycoons. G'day, Ty. G'day, TK. Uh, good to have you on board, mate. Are you ready? Have you done all the form? Have you studied all the pedigrees? Yeah, it's obviously a very different role for myself to be a part of this, but you know, it's part of life. You've got to take on a new journey and I'm very excited to be a part of it all. So let's hope um, we can have a little bit of luck with the draw and buy some nice horses. An old rival of yours also joins us and that's what it's all about in the racing league as well. State versus state, team versus team, horse versus horse, manager versus manager, ex-jockey versus ex-jockey. And I'm glad to say joining us as the manager of the Vic Hustlers is Chris Simons. G'day, Chris. Hi, gentlemen. How are we all? Yeah, good, good, mate. Um, are you excited by this? I know you're a real big innovator as far as racing is concerned, and no doubt this is one of those really big innovations. Absolutely. I was wrapped when I got the phone call from yourself, and uh, this is really exciting, uh, not only for the team that are uh, on board right now, but this is a growing event. Uh, you know, anyone can own, own a racehorse, which is fantastic, and uh, I'm really looking forward to being able to showcase the horses to the Vic Hustler team, uh, ownership team. And, uh, you know, I'm going to show them right behind the scenes and it's something I can't wait to do. 
Uh, looking forward to it, Chris, as well. I know you've been studying it. And of course, we've had thousands and thousands of votes that have rolled in from our owners about what <coughs> they'd like to be joining their sides. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail in just a few moments' time. So we've got two jockeys, Ty Anglin, Chris Simons, and he had hopes of being a jockey too, our Queensland manager, Steve Morley, but that ended at about four years of age when he was uh, 65 <laughs> kilos. But I'm glad to say that Steve's one of those real industry leaders in Queensland. He's the stud manager as well of Glen Logan Park Stud, which is the biggest stud in all of Queensland. And he's a passionate Queenslander, Steve. So Steve Morley, uh, nice to have you on board for the racing league, Steve. Mate, thank you very much. And uh Really honoured to be here on behalf of the Queenslanders. Uh, I, I ran into a lot of the guys down there at the um, at the Magic Million Sales. Not only not only the trainers that got the go uh, got the gong, but also plenty of the members that are in. And uh, it's really exciting. I can't wait to introduce them to the game. And uh, there's plenty of passion up here in the north. I can tell you that. Looking forward to kicking a little bit. Yeah, looking forward to that. And we should say this is probably a good time, Steve, to say also that all the votes that have come in. We thank all our owners of the TRL for being involved. Uh, and of course, there was all that interest during the Magic Millions and of course, some um, thousands and thousands of votes plus preferences then uh, that have rocked in for this first draft. Yeah, so we've recorded those votes and thank you everyone who did vote. Uh, circa 3,000 individual votes with around nine selections each. So uh, over 25,000 individual selections uh, in terms of your preferences. Those have been shared with the managers of your team they will now, uh, <laughs> depending on what, what gets drawn out by Ray as to who goes first, that will then be over to the managers as to, as to which horses are, are selected for your teams. I think it's probably a good time to also to note that the Black Hearts aren't part of this first process. Uh, each team needs to get to a minimum of 2,500 units, which they're not quite there yet. However, uh, there's a lot of a lot of conjecture about who's going to win this racing league, and uh, we think there's a fair few things in the Blackhearts' favour. Um, they're probably a month behind where where we wanted them to be, and that's that's pretty much because their racing can't will fill at the peak time, and we're asking for trainer pitches. So Blackhearts will be very much a part of the racing league. Uh, this is a long game we're playing, and. Um, Write them off at your peril. Oh, yes. Uh, they'll be uh, right in the thick of it. Don't worry about that. So how does it work? They put me in charge of this. I don't believe it. how this works. So uh, people who know their American sports would know it really well how a draft system works. So it goes like this. The draft is designed in a snake format to enable each team to have a selection of picks. Now, each team in the draft will draw a randomised letter. Now, that's going to be up to Ray to pull that out. This will represent the position that you select in the draft. For example, if you draw the letter C, this will represent your team having the third selection in the draft. Therefore, drawing A, your team has the first selection, B, second selection, and C, your team has the third selection. So based on the letter draw, team A will get picks one, six, and seven. Team B will get picks two, five, and eight. And Team C gets picks three, four, and nine. So it's going to be up to – that's how it works. So that's how it's spread across. That's how it works basically in the NBA, the AFL, the NFL, all the big sports that have this draft system uh, working. So it gave me a little bit of a headache trying to work that all out, but I think I did an outstanding job. <laughs> now, let's get down to it now because I know everyone switched on to find out exactly what horses they're going to be picked. But, Ray Murray, if you can, make that famous pork pie hat. Um, God knows what jumped out of that when you got it out of the wardrobe. But <laughs> uh, can we have a look as you put your three teams, the three teams go into the pork pie hat, mix them around a bit for us. Yep. I'll, and, I'll, I'll just show you the uh, the teams there, uh, Terry, that, the, Rogues, the Rogues, the Tycoons and the yep. Hustlers. If, uh, if you can see those three, we, we'll just shuffle them around a bit and shuffle them a bit more. And we put them into the hat. The hat's empty, Steve. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> Gee whiz, Ray, so, where'd you get those little playing cards? <laughs> my business card, I get a free plug here, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I need the money. If you can uh, pull a rabbit out of that hat, well, you go to the top of the pile, mate. One, two, three. We'll stir them up and put them above eye level. This is big. 
Well, you're all set to go there, TK, and I'll pull out a, the, the first one. Yep. It's the Tycoons. The New South Wales Tycoons are the first team out. They will get the first pick, which is quite incredible. They'll get picks uh, one, six, and seven. No Second bias pick. here either, TK. Whilst I'm sitting in New South Wales, I have worked in the three states, so love them all. You're a Victorian. We won't hold that against you. I first met you up in Brisbane. So yeah. obviously Queensland and now major big name for yourself is the boss in Sydney. So Ray, okay, the second team out, me. New South Wales being the first team out, the second team out. Is the Hustlers, the Vic Hustlers. So they will get the second pick. That's going to be Chris Simons. We'll get picks two, five and eight. So New South Wales, the first team out. New South Wales, first team out. Vic Hustlers, the second team out. And now, obviously, <laughs> the Queensland Rogues. There was no, sus no suspense with that, was there? The Queensland Rogues come out third. Good on you, Ray. Luckily, you've worked in all three states, mate. Yeah, well, I'll postpone my holidays in Queensland, I think. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> uh, Mate, we want you to oversee the um, the whole draft process, so we'll get you to stay there online, mate, if you possibly can. And as the boys sort of do their last minute thinking about what horses they'd like to, and they'll judge from the votes, the thousands of votes that have come in, as they check those votes and try and line up with their picks, we'll go back to Mick Malone, our head of bloodstock for the TRL, and go through um, the reasons he chose these nine premium yearlings from the Magic Millions. Mick, um, lot 29, this was a little bit of a negotiation as well, mate, this uh, grey fastening colt. Yeah, it was. Um, obviously, uh, obviously, it was a horse that um, was sold quite early, so it was an opportunity for us to strike. Um, so, But we did have to negotiate. He passed in the ring, and uh, we got a crack at him after. But, look, just a lovely horse, and... And Fastnet Rock, what an amazing stand. When you think of, you know, Atlantic Jewels and Machines and Shoals and Fox Wedge and Smart Missile, he's just been a phenomenal stand throughout. And recently you've got like Acadia Queen, Levandi and Acrobat, who won the two-year-old English nursery, like a lovely horse, very hard to buy these proven stands. And uh, he, he's just a proper, a proper cult, lovely mover. And I loved him for the middle we saw him. There you go. That was the first one out, and that's uh, from Lime Country uh, Thoroughbreds, Greg and Joe Griffin there, and they're members of the New South Wales Tycoons, but they've promised that whatever horse, uh, whatever side picks up their, their Fastnet Rock Colt, they'll buy some shares in that um, particular thing just so they can follow their, their horse that they bred, which is terrific. Uh, Mick Lot 185 is the Piero Bay Colt, Cool Schnitzel the Mum, for 285000 including GST. Yeah, beautiful horse. Um... I had so many people approach me once I bought this bloke and uh, they just loved him. He just, he sort of even looks like Piero is an unbelievably great stand. This bloke has a lot of schnitzel to him too. So he, he might be precocious, which you often have to wait for Piero's, but um, he's out of a schnitzel mare and actually it's hundred percent strike rate winners to runners that cross. And then if you add Reduce Choice in there as a broodmare sire, who's obviously the sire of schnitzel, you see horses like Levandia, Katie Queen and, and Regal Power, it's just a it's a proper cross, proper cult from a really, really good farm. I was wrapped to get him. Yeah, which is terrific. We are wrapped to got him as well. This is the one though, Mick, isn't it? Um, this proved to be an absolutely masterstroke by yourself. The half-sister to Shikwera, but we've got to say which won the Magic Millions, but you bought it, what, two days before? Yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, easy to claim now, isn't it? But I've got to say, when I'm looking at yearlings in the team, just generally try and like the horse first. You don't get too carried away with the pedigree. And who was to know that the horse was obviously he was he was right up there in the betting to, to win the magic. But uh, this filly just and I, I saw a lot of hellbents and they they all look like Vinny. And this filly reminds me of those early I'm Invincible fillies that we used to see. Um, she just had the scope. Um, she's got the action. She looks precocious. And obviously her family's ticked off as precocious out of a you know not a singled out mare. You can't get more, much more speed than that. So, And then to kick it off for the Magic Man's brother that uh, obviously adds huge value to her. So, yeah, a ripper. So, Mick, the, the subject came up there at Magic Man's that night after Shakira had won the Magic Man's. What, what would this horse have bought had it gone through after the race as opposed to before it? And what was the consensus? I think generally you'd think it would double 
Um, you know, it's just hard to buy. Like it is the the Magic Man's is the golden slipper of those restricted listed races, uh, and it it always weighs in as a good race later on as well. Yeah. Um, and he's been he's done he's done a great job from day dot. But uh, look look, you know, I think I think what it does do is it just confirms we bought it very 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 well. Yep. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean it'll be the first pick for everybody, though, but no. it may well be the first pick that people have voted. So it'll go back to the votes and back to the team managers as well. I know um, Peter Moody was bidding against you on this one. The Pride of Dubai Colt, mate. Just add water. Yeah, really nice horse. Uh, and just just real two-year-old, you know, um, just to me, just has that really sharp look to him from a Snippets and Mare. And uh, Snippets and as a broodmare sire, Hasn't been around long enough to really rate, but Snippets himself, Snippetson's father, is a brood missile, is phenomenal. But this boat just looks like I would be surprised if he's one of the first horses we see up and trialling. He just really looks sharp. And like you say, Moody was was chasing me straight after we bought him, so he loved him as well. And it's good to have the, you know, the horses that you pick, you know, verified by trainers like that and good judges like that. Um, Flying Art is really making a name for himself as a sire now. Uh, lot four, six, nine, mate. And we talk about coming off a good farm. This one came off uh, the Flying Artie Colt, came off the Newgate farm. Yeah, and the same breed as the Taurus, who we saw won by 4.5 lengths in Melbourne uh, from the from the Friedman camp, from, also from Reduce Choice Mare. Um, who's now favourite for the uh, Blue Diamond, or third foul, second favourite for the Blue Diamond. Lovely, lovely horse. Uh, I've got to say... Um, you know, flying arties, you sort of had to change your vision when you look at them. They're quite scopey. Um, and this bloke, he, you know, definitely has a bit of that scope to him. But he's got a massive hip, as you can see in the photo, and he's deep wither right down his back, really bright eye, and was and was really positive. Every time I looked at him, he'd just roll up and down like it was his first parade, and he was a very busy horse. So uh, wrapped, wrapped to get him. And from a good farm, Newgate, they're on fire. We saw what happened last weekend. Every one of those stands had a winner in nearly every state. So... Uh, good farm, lovely horse. Good yeah, they're all too. beautiful horses, aren't they? Lot 638, mate. Now, uh, yet delay the beers. This was on day three and it went through late. Yeah, um, we did not one of the big spends, but uh, one thing we know in this game, they come from anywhere uh, when you buy these horses. And But uh, $80,000 filly from Crestfield, really, really good farm to buy from. From a Stormcat mare, and, and I'm a big believer in broodmare sires. And if you look at Stormcat as a broodmare sire, so the father... Of, of this this particular filly's mother. Stormcat is a broodmare sire. You know, he's one of the best. He's had 43 Group 1 winners from, from Stormcat mares and over 150 other group enlisted winners. That that just gives this sort of pedigree great depth. And, and if you have a look at her again, looks as precocious as the Pride of Dubai. And I, again, I think she'll be one up and going early. Yeah, which is great news. That was 638. 673, mate, the, the hell bent. And you talk about good farms. This one coming off... Yarraman Park, and it was um, it was the name on the sire on the tip of everyone's tongue, wasn't it? Hell Ben up there. Yeah, he, he sold a, a big number of horses, and to average come out averaging one hundred and seventy thousand off a sort of twenty twenty seven half thousand service fee. A big big, it's a big tick for him. A lot of people saw them as as I suppose spoke to you guys a few times as when you went to Yarraman. They had 30-odd yearlings, 15 by Hellbent and 15 by Vinny or something thereabouts, and they'd walk out. You couldn't tell if they were, if they were Vinny's or Hellbent. So they, they've got lovely scope and bone, and they look like they're going to be nice and early. Uh, this bloke's out of a Magic Albert mare, um, and as a broodmare sire, we saw Vega Magic, who was uh, also out of a Magic Albert mare. And again, I love to see, to buy horses out of good broodmare sires, and Magic Albert's only a young horse, but to see a horse like Vega Magic and F Flying Jess, Magic Alibi, and Vega Magic placed in the in the Everest, so plenty to go on with here. Mm. Now they all look beautiful to me, Mick. But even I could see um, how attractive this "So You Think" brown colt was uh, from St. Remy. Um, it was an absolute stunning looking beast. Yeah, out of a Star Witness mare, um, he, he's done a great job. Star Witness, he's only young, a young stand as far as a brood mare size is concerned. But he's already come out with a Group Three winner from only like six runners out of out of Star Witness mares. Uh, I, I saw Peltzer as a yearling, and I've got to say, he just reminded me a lot like Peltzer. He's he's very, very – he's got that real strong scope to him, like he's going to be early enough. He's not going to have to wait too long, I don't think. You often have to with the breed, uh, so you think. But a uh, lovely, lovely horse. Really, really, really – I was wrapped to get him as well. And there was also a session after the Magic Millions, after Shaquera, who we've got the half-sister to – the owners of the Racing League had the half-sisters to uh, the winner of the Magic Millions. You waited for – 
the event to be over. And then late on the Saturday night, you struck, mate, the final purchase for TRL. I think it was lot 900. Yeah, the Written Tycoon Colt, the game from a Stitzel mare. Uh, lovely horse from a really, really good farm. Uh, Ronnie Gilbert's been breeding stakes horses up there from a small mare, a number of brood mares. Year in, year out, he bats well above his average. And if you look at Written Tycoon as, as a sire of late, then you think of horses like Ollo Kirk, Hippie, Odium, Tie Zone, Dirty Work, High Tail. He is on fire. And to pick this bloke up from that farm with that pedigree, big tick. Very happy. Mm. He'll be, he'll be, um, well, it's up to our managers and our owners who have voted, but you imagine, you know, well, you have a look at all of them. There's uh, not one bad one among the nine, but some boom sires involved. Yeah, yeah, there's a good team there. We're, 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 there was a lot of effort that went into <laughs> securing those horses, and uh, a big thanks to Mick and his team. It's now over to the managers, isn't it? It is. Um, based it is. upon the votes, they've got your votes. Uh, and it's Ty. Ty, um, you were last to the call, mate. You're going to be first as <laughs> the first manager to uh, go to the well, so to speak. Um, what have you come up with and what have, the, what have the New South Wales Tycoons owners told you? Yeah, very exciting. I'm glad I got first vote because <laughs> I'm tipping this horse would have been the first one to take. But uh, with about two, over 2,000 slot holders, the, the votes come in hard, obviously, for the lot 305, the Hellbent filly. So... We're going to spend up big straight away, 396000 we're going to spend. And uh, all the New South Wales voters are keen to get on and get the filly straight away. There you go. So the Hellbent filly goes first, the New South Wales tycoons. And now the fight will start between the trainers to try and get that filly in. And if you uh, would have bought it on the Saturday night instead of the Thursday tie, you could would have blown the entire budget. You would have had one horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would have had no money left, so I'm glad um, we were able to get it a few days before the race. But yeah, I'd, I knew I knew if we got uh, got in first, we were obviously going to choose this filly straight away. So I was lucky enough lucky enough to ride a dad back in the day. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's good to get get her straight away. So cool. It was it was actually interesting, Ty. There was one team that didn't wouldn't have chosen her given the votes that came in it was very close um but yeah. just out of interest uh, that's the way another team came in that's all irrelevant now um because she's gone and uh the big hustlers are up yep. and chris simon so well, with the hellbent philly gone chris you get your first pick well you do the math because we would have loved to have got that <laughs> hellbent however and not to be uh so Based on what my uh, team here in Victoria have voted for, um, massive numbers with the votes as well, which is great to see that we've got a really strong team. But don't forget, you can still jump on um, this unbelievably grouse uh, new concept, the Racing League. So don't forget, there's still slots available. But we're going to have to go for lot uh, number 900, the Written Tycoon Colt. He's a cracking type. Um, look, you know, I love the... Ole Kirk reference as well. He's one of my favourite uh, specimens getting around at the moment. Yeah, Ole Kirk um, comes back in the expressway on the weekend at Rose Hill Gardens, the 1,200 metre race there. It's a group two, but some great horses have won that expressway stakes. The likes of, um, geez, testing my memory now, <laughs> Kingston Town, Star Kingdom, Surprise Artist, Saintly. So three-year-olders have got a great record in that race as well, thanks yeah. to the crowd. As an example, um, Mick, because um, you know if we're all if we're in this game, we're in to dream. And if if there is a stallion that comes out of the racing league, it is the pro the proceeds from the sale of that horse will be uh, uh, divvied pro rata to the, the team owners. Mick, do we circa or Steve Morley? Do you have a feel for what Ole Kirk would be worth as a son of Written Tycoon who uh, has won two Group Ones? Uh, that well, it's not only that, mate. He also hails from the Black Caviar family, and all too hard. So it's an amazing uh, so, uh, family as well. And look, it's very difficult once they get up over twenty-five million to uh, put a value on it. But it's over that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, a, lot, that's a lot dream. of money. That's the dream. It's a lot of money. It was Luskin yeah. Star was the horse I was thinking of. By the way, the Expressway winner, not Star Kingdom. Steve Morley. Uh, look, it's. You know, I know you're not used to going last. It's not really last. Call it a good third, all right? Uh, but you're, oh, the, third, you're got, the third. You're the third round one. Three, 
thrilled to have drawn this position uh, knowing what we've got now because the way this works, we get both the third and the fourth selection. So basically the Queenslanders get two of the top four as far as I'm concerned. So have no dramas with this whatsoever. Um, and it was our state on votes that didn't pick the hellbent filly. So um, realistically, we are going to go for that wonderful looking horse, Lot 29, the Fastnet Rock Cult um, out of Alice Island. Uh, I actually had a few blokes down in the at, at Magic Millions pull me aside and say, if there's any way in the world there's any greys, we'd love a grey. And if it's a boy, we want to call him Kevin. So there we are. <laughs> Kevin, it is. We'll, take, we'll take Kevin. Yeah, got I, I should also say... But not only that, though, it's, it's an amazing cross. Fastnet Rock over Stormcat Mares is almost singularly the best cross that he can have. He's only had 81 runners. He's had 19 stakes horses, uh, which is almost 25%, and that's unheard of. Horses like Irish Lights, Fox Wedge, Awesome Rock, Sherwood Forest, Fast and Rocking, these are all out of Stormcat line mares uh, by Fastnet Rock. So absolutely thrilled to have got that horse. Wow, that is um, so. That's that's worked out well for you. The um, yeah. names pulled out by Ray Murray, which is terrific. As you mentioned, mate, you were third. So in the second second row, you get the first pick, which is number four. So what have you come up with? Well, the team have. Well, I'm so glad they have because the team have actually voted exactly the way that I would have, even on my own inspections. And I think there's a young horse coming through the ranks at the moment called Flying Artie, who is really making some serious inroads from a, only a small number of runners. He's, he's doing the job. And uh, I like the cross again out of Redoute's Mare, as uh, Mick Malone mentioned, uh, one of the favourites for the Blue Diamond is uh, a Flying Artie out of Redoute's Mare. So we are going to take lot 469, the Flying Artie out of Lalia. Mm, I know that was sought after by the Friedman brothers, so they won't be training it because no, they they're not... Be. You wouldn't have them up in Queensland, would you, Steve? Well, they'd have. Uh, I'm pretty sure the boys up here are, are keen to uh, mark their own territory. All the all the uh, trainers are so fired up about this. It's a great concept, uh, and congratulations, boys! I can't wait to be part of it. But just to be able to introduce all these new people into racing and what we get to see each and every day is amazing. It's a great great opportunity for them, and they're going to love it. They'll absolutely love it. So. For all the team, the, the Queensland Rogues that are already in there, go out there, grab a mate or two, bring them into the fold, and uh, let's really give these guys down south a push. Good on you. Exactly right. We're excited about it. We're pumped up about it. And look at the quality of the horse flesh already on offer with the initial nine purchases by the TRL mm -hmm. owners. Um, Chris, it's back to you for Victoria, mate, for pick number five. Okay. So we're heading in the direction of the So You Think cult. Uh Patience is something Victorians have, and we're, after listening to Mick, we're obviously going to need it. This bloke might take a little bit to get to the races. They seem to be better as three-year-olds, but uh, crack and type, uh, based on the voting. I'll tell you another thing uh, for nothing. Hayes, Davenick were the underbidders on this horse, so oh, could work in our favour if uh, this bloke ends up in the hayes Davenick camp. All uh, My fingers are crossed that that could be the case. Yeah, I'm sure the fire will be ringing pretty quickly as well then. Yeah, well, it rang pretty quickly after after the hammer fell, didn't it, with um, them saying, yeah, they're pretty keen on that horse. If it just happens to be in Victoria, if the people vote for it, we'd love to be able to try and get it. So the battle will continue. We'll tell you who trains or how we work out who trains the horses after we complete the draft. Uh, New South Wales Tyres, manager for the Tycoons, mate. What have the people said? Yeah, we're all. I'm pretty excited actually after all that because they left one out that I. My favourite two-year-old of all time was Piero, so I'm going to go lot one eight five Piero, out of Cool Snitzel, which any sort of Snitzel horse that I've been involved in as in trapeze artist, I absolutely love. So two hundred eighty-six thousand, we're going with the Piero Colt. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's not a bad sixth pick, is it, when you think about it? Uh, overall, the second pick for the New South Wales Tycoons to end up with a Piero Colt. Uh, that means you also get pick. you go to the first pick of the third rung um, tie. So you have another pick back-to-back, -back, mate. Yeah, right. You spent I'm a bit go, of dough, Ty. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of money. I've gone big, so I might have to shorten up here. But um, I wasn't surprised, but... 
the horse that we only paid 88000 for, the New South Wales voters saw the same thing that I liked. And there was the lot three, 638, the headwater filly. So we're going to go her there. I think we, we got her very cheaply. Uh, we saw a photo of her just before. She really nice type. And um, yeah, I've got two fillies in a colt. So I'm wrapped with the horses that I'm able to choose. Good balance. Beautiful balance there for the New South Wales Tycoons. We'll check your team's horses when we're completed. Uh, pick number eight goes back to the Victorians and it goes to Chris Simons. There's only two left, mate. Yeah, it would have been nice to get a filly on our team, but it's not to be. Uh, we're thinking, well, we know what we want and uh, that is the Pride of Dubai Colt. Um, lot 425. Uh, outstanding boy he is uh, looking forward to having him part of our team All right. so that's the pride of Dubai mm -hmm. that means one bloke called P Moody could be on the phone pretty he might, he might end up with it <laughs> be, be pretty quickly he might even have to start drinking VB instead of 4X but he is on that Vic Hustlers team that's a promise he's made um, let's go well um, you go back to the Queenslanders and Steve there's not a big decision here for you mate it's not a big decision, but it's still a very uh, one that I'm really happy with because actually, you know, this this horse really uh, rated quite highly in the voting. So we are on lot six seven three, the Hellbent Colt from the Magic Albert Mayor Queen of Candy, and uh, three cracking colts to kick the rogues along. So thrilled with that. Three colts. Um, there for the Queensland Rogues, which is nice. Of the nine, there were seven colts in all, and the two fillies, and that's just the way the land um, tumbled there for Mick Malone, who headed up our bloodstock department for the Magic Millions. Um, wow, there you have it. History made, the first ever draft in horse racing, and it's only the first of what's going to be a few more to come, really, for the racing league. We'll go back now and we'll check your teams. So you, if you're watching on screen, you'll be able to see that. But for the... Queensland side, we'll go. We'll go with New South Wales first because they will pick a a um, the fast net. Uh, the sorry, the Hellbent filly was the first pick. The Piero Colt and the Headwater filly they all go to New South Wales Tycoons, picked by the owners along with manager Ty Anglin. Um, for the Vicks, who were the second pick, they ended up with the Written Tycoon Colt, the So You Think Colt, and the Pride of Dubai Colt. So there's a nice, nice little trifecta there. And then Queensland actually ended up with picks three and four. So as them, as Steve Morley mentioned, got two of the top four. So Fastnet Colt, Flying Artie Colt, and the Hellbent Colt as well. Ray Murray, there you go. That's the first ever draft in the world of horse racing. Well, that's what we're declaring anyway. Yeah, you look like you've got a golden slipper field already, uh, oh. TK. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? We, and we'll win the Magic Millions on the way. <laughs> Time to put uh, Mick Malone on the spot. Mick, how you feel? Oh, the best team. Yeah, give us your. Oh, give, if you have to pick one team, <laughs> you're on the spot. Yeah, look, I've got to say, it's it's amazing. Like here we have 16. By the time we finish, 16 yearlings they'll be. <laughs> um, and and like looking at this draft and the horses that I had a fair bit to do with choosing for the, for everybody. I've got to say I'm going to go with Queensland. I just oh. really, 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 I'm a, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, there's been a bit of rivalry uh, with myself at State of Origins and Queensland and New South Wales, but I, I just think, I just think Steve Morley and his group have just got a uh, three lovely, lovely Colts all by the right type of stands. Yep. I've got to say if I was to go which way, I'd go Queensland, but I urge everyone take a share in every team. All right. I was about to say, I hope you're a bad judge, but I hope you're not a bad judge. If you're a bad judge, we're all in trouble. <laughs> we're all in trouble. Well, we, know, yeah, we, we know you're a good judge, mate, so that's all right. Uh, and I had 10 years in Queensland, so I could cop that a little bit. Um, what happens next? I guess that's one of the questions that um, the managers will, will negotiate with trainers. Um, of course, there's uh, three more horses to come into these sides, and, of course, the WA Blackheart's still to come. Uh, we've got one more yearling to buy, Steve, each for uh, each team. And then, of course, the two tried horses. Yeah, and that, that, that is a balancing act. And it, and it is a balancing act based upon the trust, the trust balance that's in uh, for each team. Uh, so it, it's kind of a balance between let it, tr trying to get that, that uh, balance built up 
and um, and then t- and then making the move on the tried horses, which would probably you know probably be our next move for each team. So I guess this is where each each owner can play a role, and and some teams will do this more than others, and and, and that'll determine some outcomes. The opportunity for people is to get your mates involved. Every mate you get involved builds your team's trust balance up. You also get uh, $40 off your, your, your monthly fees for every single person you get involved in the racing league. All you have to do is put your ID number. When they buy, purchase, you put your ID number in. It's $40 off every time. Uh, so you, you're doing two things. You're building up your team's trust so uh, trust account so that when we do go on to the, to the tried horses, which will probably be next, You've got a bigger wallet. Your team's got a bigger wallet. So we'd encourage everyone to, to get your mates mates behind it, bring your costs down and uh, and put your team in a strong position. And I guess unlike the yearlings, they're all for sale. I mean, there's seven major sales, aren't there, right throughout the country, uh, plenty of yearlings. And the tried horses, they sort of, you can pick them up at all varying times, all yeah, different times. that's right. And, and with, with COVID... Uh, the digital sales format has has expanded. Uh, it's more liquid. There's some really good opportunities there. We're keeping an eye on those as we speak. We came close on one the other day. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a real opportunity and and a next exciting phase because once you've got those tried horses, straight to it's game on and you and um, you know it'll pretty much be earning points in the league. Uh, the the league as a reminder for the first year, it goes for 18 months. Uh, to give you know, your horses a chance to get up and running. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be game on. So, yeah, we encourage people to get behind your team and get as many of your, of your network and friends involved. Yeah, it'll be a very, very long year, won't it? It'll be uh, Everest Day, Caulfield Cup Day 2022. That's right. That's right, yeah. There'll be some fun had between now and then. Oh, geez, sure. there'll be plenty of fun. Uh, the roller coaster. Because yeah. I, I don't think it's come across in this call, but uh, we've got a couple of managers here and um, Brittany and WA who are a tad competitive. <laughs> um, and I think I think that's going to be some, uh, yeah, there's going to be some competition flow between the teams, which will be great fun. Yeah, and for all our owners of the Racing League, we'll be checking with our managers. We'll be discussing trainers. Uh, with the trainer allocation will, will come eventually. Um, we'll be trying to really give everybody, all the owners, the best possible chance of um, getting that return. That's winning at the track. And that's by placing owners, placing horses with trainers who are best suited, uh, in our opinion. That's right. Yeah. And we'll do that after the, the six horses have been purchased. There you go. Um, Ray Murray, great to have you on board, mate. Um you can get some more use out of that hat now. <laughs> Thanks, and uh, all the best to all the owners. Uh, uh, you know, well, I'm sure it'll be a great uh, ride for them. Well, there's thousands already, and there's thousands more joining us. Uh, Mick Malone, as always, mate, thanks for your time, and thanks again for your expertise up there at the Magic Millions and, and in the future as well. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy. Uh, Steve Morley from the Queensland Roads, you are now the reigning favourite to win the inaugural premiership. <laughs> We've gone from third third pick in the draft to number one seed, which I'm happy about. And I'll tell you what else. While this feed has been going to, to air, there's been little texts dropping down at the top of it. And uh, every second one says, go, Kevin. So uh, <laughs> off we go, boys. Looking forward to it. Yeah, that is the great cult, which is great. Uh, Chris Simons, mate, really good to have you on board, mate. We look forward to having a lot of fun, which is going to be uh, a tremendous inaugural year of the Racing League. And you've got three nice horses to start with, mate. Absolutely. And what's great to see is people are already interacting. We've seen the messages coming through, which is fantastic. I look forward to reading them back. Hopefully they're not taking the piss out of me, but uh, <laughs> look, at, uh, you know, I, I look forward to taking people on an amazing journey, uh, showing them behind the scenes, uh, horses, their, their own horses getting broken in, things like getting their feet trimmed. Um, did you know that horses have to go to the dentist? You know, that we're, we've got a lot of first time owners here and I want to give them the best experience. What this will do. It's great for the industry. What we know is a fantastic industry moving forward. And for a uh, little outlay for people, uh, they're going to have heaps of fun. So it's exciting. And let's just hope that Kira Ma puts as much uh, into his training efforts as he did to his pitch to uh, this great concept. Yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. The trainer pitches were a real feature. Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, Ty, again, mate, you, uh, you did a great job for us during the My Everest campaign. We're thrilled to have you on board, mate, as the manager for the New South Wales Tycoons and, and lending your expertise, mate, to the owners of the Tycoons. 
Yeah, thank you. It's absolute pleasure to be a part of it all. And yeah, it's for a little cost of hopefully a bunch of mates can get to the pub and cheer home the tycoons each and every week when our ponies go around. So it's obviously, you know, going to be a little bit until we have our first runners with the lots that we just chose today. But hopefully we can give everyone an update of what trainers we get, um, when they're spelling, when they're in work, the main gallops, and just really get the owners being a part of this as if they own the whole horse. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, Ty, we, we thank you. And you, I can guarantee you one thing. We can't guarantee you absolute success at the track, but we can guarantee you that you'll be you'll be kept up to date with everything that happens with your team. We've got a great content department here at the Racing League and you'll be, um, you'll be spoiled for choice from the information that you will be receiving. You won't be short of any updates regarding your your horses and the journey that you're going to be on because it's all that's all part of it, getting to the track, winning at the track, celebrating at the track and beyond the track, which is the part I really, really enjoy. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. There you go. History again uh, for the racing league and the racing industry and great involvement from all our thousands of owners in that first draft for the racing league. Thanks to all our guests, behalf of Steve and myself and the entire team at 